Hi everyone, uh, my name is Brian Goffberg. This is Danny Goffberg. Here we have Tim Masso. And uh, welcome to Watches Live. So today we are going to be curating a collection of watches from our website. We have the first tray here. We have a lot of trays of watches here behind us. Uh, and over the next few hours, we're going to be going through these watches, uh, a little bit about each watch, uh, how much we're charging for the watch, and why we think uh, these watches are good buys right now. Um, so, oh, and every 15 minutes, we're going to be giving away some watch swag. We have a lot of the pieces here on the wall. So we have the Tag Heuer hat, Rolex hat, Rolex golf bag, Patek Philippe ties, the Patek Philippe uh, authorized biography, umbrellas, tons of stuff. So... Every 15 minutes, we're going to be giving that away. Uh, in order to get the swag, you're going to need to email watcheslive at govbergwatches.com and just put watches live in the header. Um, so yeah, so starting right off, we are going to start with a favorite of Tim's, the Jaeger Le Culture Deep Sea Ceramic. Cermet, I'm Cermet, sorry. Yeah. Cermet. Can't shatter that case. Yeah. Uh, no, so you think. Uh, so this is a automatic... First time for everything. This is a automatic chronograph uh, with, I would say, patinaed hands. Yeah, best way to describe this watch is to say that it's everything you loved about the original deep sea diving alarm from the late 50s, only bigger and more modern, more scratch resistant, and more water resistant. It's important to remember that any vintage watch, and let's be clear, this is not an alarm like the original. The Deep Sea became a collection in 2011. This is a watch for the person who likes vintage imagery and romance, but doesn't want to deal with a watch that's not water resistant, not serviceable, and too valuable to wear in earnest. And let's face it, no one wants to wear a ceramic watch like a beater, but with Cermet, you've got enough scratch resistance that it's like ceramic without being shatterable because it has an aluminum core. So this was one of those watches that we've talked about on previous episodes where we really want Jaeger to get back to their roots and yeah. start producing affordable sports watches. So this is a watch that generally retails for a little bit over $17,000. Uh, we have it on our website for $10,495. I'm going to let my dad hold this one up to the camera a little bit. And this is just one of those pieces I'm, where... I'm the prop. <laughs> you are the prop. That's what happens when you're the dad. You get a little older, the son does the talking, and I'm the prop. <laughs> so this is one of those watches where, um, again, it's... Like Van and White. <laughs> this is one of those watches where uh, there's a real good sense of value because, you know, a lot of the depreciation's already been taken by the first owner. The watch is in overall great shape, uh, and it's a way to get into a somewhat expensive Jaeger LeCoultre sports watch at a good price. Yeah, and let me be clear tonight, folks. Although we are dealers of both new and pre-owned, all the watches that you're seeing tonight are from our pre-owned collection. That's how we're able to offer the best value for this one-time live-only offering. Remember, it's once passed. It's like the best dish at Thanksgiving. If you don't take a spoonful the first time around, it's not coming around again. <laughs> so for watch number two, and as I said earlier, these are a lot of watches that I sort of picked out from, you know, available on our website in order to... Uh, you know, watches that I think are good value and just, you know, you know, overall great pieces. So why don't you tell us a little bit about this Roger Dubois Sympathy by Retro Perpetual. <laughs> so this brings back <laughs> memories. So no. <laughs> I'm a little laugh. You're a lot of laugh. No, this was one of the original sympathies and it was from Roger Dubuis when he first launched his line. This watch, in fact, Cellini Jewelers was the jeweler that launched it in this country, I believe. And this is the watch that sort of set the brand on fire. This one and the rectangular perpetual that was just like it. It was a little oversized. But what's nice and rare about this is this is like the original Roger Dubuis uh, perpetual when Roger Dubuis actually worked at the company and was designing the movements and designing the watches himself. Um, it's just beautiful. Tim, what do you think of this? I think if you want to get into the best Geneva Seal quality watches on the market at the best price right now, late 90s, early 2000s, Roger Dubuis is where it's at because you're going to get something that's extraordinary with lacquered or enameled dials, retrograde mechanisms from Roger Dubuis himself, also from Agenor, which was uh, Jean-Marc Viderecht's specialist manufacturer in Geneva. They often collaborated. 
Jean-Marc often associated with the Harry Winston Opus line and high complications. Roger Dubuis, of course, a longtime complications engineer at Patek Philippe. The watches you're getting from that era are already cult classics. Again, you want to get into Roger Dubuis now before the market discovers them because you cannot get more watch in terms of finish, in terms of features and character for the money. And that's something else that I would throw out there. The character factor with these watches is huge. Take a look at this original sympathy case. Not only do you have a shaped bezel, a shaped case, and a shaped dial, shaped but you have a, yes, a shaped sapphire. This was extraordinarily difficult to do to the point that Roger Dubuis eventually gave up on it because they weren't making enough money on the watches. So when you buy something like this from that era, you're getting a watch that was designed first with a cost added on to make a profit, not a watch designed but, to a but price. But you know where I'll chime in? This watch, because see, I was around when it was launched. You were only like two. But the difference is when this launched, this watch made Roger Dubuis. So when he came out with this, the movement, not the movement so much, but the design of the dial was way ahead of its time. And when people saw them, the brand immediately took off. So what's nice about this is this is one of like the original when Roger Dubuis was just getting started and what made people so crazed for it. Today we might take a look at a complicated dial like this and think that it's normal or common, but back when this was launched, it was way ahead of himself. So uh, this is just a beautiful watch. So measuring it at 37 millimeters, it actually fits a little bit larger because of the sympathy case. Having retailed for, I'm sure, over 100,000, Tim? I don't think it cost quite that much back in the 90s, but maybe inflation adjusted it was in that range. We're now asking for the watch uh, just under 23,000. So uh, an amazing watch at incredible value. And again, I think they're right up there in terms of finish with where Patek was at the time and where Vacheron was at the time. What they did different with the retrograde system, though, is they created a watch with a ton of character. Absolutely impossible to mistake that for anything else. You know, you make that sound so good, Tim. I'm going to take that one for myself. I'm going to put that over there. <laughs> okay, moving on. So uh, we've got an eclectic mix. Everything's mixed around the, uh, the trays. So... Moving right along, here we have a PAM 000. So this is sometimes referred to as a base level Panerai or the Zero. Uh, and this is a true tool watch in every sense of the word. You've got uh, just a plain dial with hours and minutes, and you've got your 44 millimeter Luminor stainless steel case uh, with your scalloped adjuster over here in order to adjust the time and wind the watch. You've got an Unitas manual wind movement. What's the power reserve on that? Well, that watch, I mean, it varies up to about 56 hours when fully wound with the Unitas base. I think that one might be closer to 42, 45. They extended it as time went by. Got it. So this right here is when people think Panerai and people think Panerai sports watches in particular, this is going to be the watch that comes right to mind. And uh, How much is it? This watch is... $4,950. Here, I'll let you hold that. Give me one second here. And uh, this watch is available on our website. So it comes complete with box and papers. And, you know, a lot of the watches here that I've selected come with the box and papers. And I believe it was a, a question on last night's episode of what exactly does it mean when you have box and papers. So the box and papers are the original box and the original warranty certificate and and instruction manual that originally came with the watch and these items together with the watch create the whole package and they add to the overall resale value of the watch over time so a lot of these watches come in from all over the world and we do our best in order to try and curate watches that are the complete set I think it's also worth mentioning that, that this particular watch is a purist's Panerai. If you've heard of the Paneristi, then you know that these watches very early on in the 1990s acquired a fan base and a following that kind of stretched beyond the scope of factory advertising up to and including unpaid Hollywood appearances in movies 
where actors, you know, the likes of Bruce Willis, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, wore these watches unsponsored. That's the kind of scope and reach of this watch's appeal. It's a very accessible price for a watch that had transcendent value. Again, the value of this watch wasn't so much in its, its cost, but in the persona that it has, and it's got a big one. Uh, we have a question from the chat, and which was, uh, if the original receipt adds to the overall value of the watch. Um, I think, I would say yes. I think having everything from the original purchase uh, definitely adds and definitely helps, and I think that it helps to legitimize uh, the watch and, and where it came from. You know, you see a lot of the vintage Rolexes and paddocks that are being brought to market, and a lot of these watches, when they do come with the original receipt of purchase, uh, it does add to the, to the overall well, it helps piece. Well, it helps in the story. Because exactly. uh, a lot of watches is, is a story, and the more you have, the more it just tells the story. Okay. So, is it swag time yet? Yeah. Okay, fine. So, our, for our first piece of swag... By the way, guys, we've actually got good swag. This isn't like the stuff I used to give away on the Watch You Want channel. I hate to say it, but it's true. Are we going with the wanger first? Yeah. Fine, let's do this. Okay. Tim, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we've got here? Because this is one of our favorites. Yeah, this was the first thing I stole from Brian's office when we merged the companies. And now you can get one without uh, the criminal record. Okay, so if you remember that there were two Swiss Army Knife companies in Switzerland. There was uh, Wenger and there was Victorinox. And although Victorinox ultimately bought and subsumed Wenger, the company is not quite dead, or at least it lives on in this Bergeon uh, or Bergeron style watchmaker's Swiss Army knife. So you've got Bergeron watchmaker's tools built into a Wenger Swiss Army knife. It's Swiss made in every respect. If you ever wanted to get started in watchmaking, uh, you can actually do it here and put it on your keychain. So what we have here is you have watchmaker screwdrivers here. So to be able to adjust uh, the bracelet of the watch or take off a strap or do any of a number of micro adjustments. You've got a thin push piece here that could actually even be used as a pusher for a watch. I don't recommend it, I mean, unless it's a steel watch, of course, but um, just an overall great utility piece. Uh, and then in addition to all of the watch tools, uh, it looks like you have a magnifying glass here as well. Uh, you have your standard, uh, you know, uh, knives and corkscrews. So, oh, we have a winner here. It is Mike. Alfarella. So Mike Alfarella, please, uh, we're going to be emailing you, um, you know, just for your information in order to be able to send this out. And congratulations on winning the first Watches Live piece of swag. Yeah. By the way, guys, that's like a hundred dollar giveaway. Remember when I used to give you catalogs that I brought back from Basel and my overweight that luggage? That is nice, by the way. Oh my and gosh. it comes with the uh, IW logo, a magazine uh, that I used to own. And uh, I made a whole bunch of them. So it's near and dear to my heart. Vintage enthusiasts, take note. This knife has a case back knife for popping the case backs. You can't cut yourself with it, but you can pop the case back off your vintage paddock. It's also good for uh, taking the straps off. It's also good for spreading butter. <laughs> so uh, congratulations, Mike, and moving on with the rest of the episode. So I think we're gonna need to speed things along here in order to get through Guys, all of the watches. why don't we throw this out here because we're getting a lot of questions, but what is the swag email address? Because we haven't expressed it terribly So well. I just sent it to the chat. It is watches live, W-A-T-C-H-E-S-L-I-V-E, at govbergwatches.com. So uh, just email, and in the, in the subject, put watches live, and we'll be able to uh, see that you've entered in to, to win the piece. Okay, I good love stuff. swag. I'll tell you, since I was little in this business, 16, love swag. And I'll be honest, guys, it's not really swag, because stuff we all get generally doesn't include free knives and paddock books, so it's better than swag. Uh, it's our version. Yeah, it's our version of swag. So, And we're going to be giving it out every week. So moving on to another watch. This I picked a watch from an independent manufacturer, Haybring, another watch that we've talked about on oh, previous wow. episodes. This watch is near and dear to uh, Tim Masso's heart. And this is actually a timezone.com 20th anniversary piece. So Tim, why don't you tell us a little bit more about this watch? Yeah, definitely. So much? I love this watch to death because first and foremost, this is a chronograph like you've never seen. Now you've seen my Amvox 2, my JLC pusherless chrono. 
This isn't an articulated case like that. What it is instead is a system where you, you activate the chrono by turning the crown, you stop the chrono by turning the crown, and then you reset the chrono by turning the crown up. Now, only 20 wow. of these were made. It's called the Habring Chrono COS. Now, Richard and Maria Habring, they run this company out of Volkermarkt, Austria. I'm to show the watch. I love this watch. It's a small company that makes only a few dozen watches a year, typically capping out between 100 and 150 pieces. That's an addition to 20. So not only an exclusive watch, but from a great company run by a guy who developed important complications for IWC in the early 90s, including the original Doppel Chrono. But think about it. This is a Time Zone 20th anniversary. How old is Time Zone now? Time Zone was founded in 1995 in Singapore, and that was their 2015 special edition. Oh, and wow. this is actually number 19, and as I said earlier, this watch actually, uh, well, I didn't say for this watch in particular, but this watch comes uh, complete with the box and papers, That's and nice. on our website, we are asking $6,950 for the watch. Do you remember what it was it what And it you guys for? can call Alan. It Alan is standing by if anybody wants to call him, right? Yeah, so Alan is standing by. I believe the telephone number is listed there on the you know, on the live stream, and uh, Alan is standing by to field any and all questions regarding the watches, uh, as well as go over pricing, because like anywhere else, uh, we are flexible on pricing. And because Brian asked, I believe that watch sold for between seven and 8,000 when it was new. So actually, as a percentage of resale, it's held on to its value better than my tour Extremely beyond. well, yeah. yeah. It's done well. Because just getting it's half the battle. And it's a gorgeous watch. I mean, it, you wouldn't know it's a time zone watch unless you look at the case back. Okay, next here. Let's go with one of my favorite, F.P. Jorn. Okay? I think you can talk about this one, don't you? Uh, I'm going to let you kick it off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he knows you. nothing about watches. Um, so, moving on. So, this is a F.P. Jorn, <laughs> F.P. Jorn Calendrier. So, what's so special about this watch is this was F.P. Jorn's first annual calendar watch. So, you've got the rose gold movement there in the back and you have his silver and an eyes dial on the front. So this watch displays, you've got the day of the week up top, you've got the month underneath, and then you've got the date uh, on a track going around the dial. So what's so special about an annual calendar is that it takes into account all of the months of the year, except for a leap year in February. So what it but does- I, You know what I like to, but let's talk a little about uh, F.P. Jorn, is that People may not know, but he makes 900 watches a year. So when you put that into perspective, every one of his watches is a limited edition. So when people look at this annual calendar and you think, okay, it's just another annual calendar, well, think about it. He probably makes no more than 35 of them a year. He's probably made no more. Much less than that. It could be much less, you're yeah. right. But he's probably made no more than 100 of these since he started. So I am a huge fan and a total bull on the brand uh, of F.P. Jorn. I think it's truly the next super collectible brand out there because as people discover it, you realize that scarcity is the true luxury and Jorn, who is a, probably one of the best living watchmakers living today, is actual scarcity and actual luxury at its finest. Do you, would you agree with that, Tim? I think it's a modern day dynasty, honestly. F.P. Jorn is a man and a brand, but I can't say that there are many men who've held on to their brand the way he has. He could have sold it for a lot more. And it's a gold, and to think about it, what's real interesting about F.P. Jorn watch, in this one in particular, it's a solid gold movement. I mean, it's one of the only companies that make watches with a solid gold movement. I think the open So, one. if you really, want to get into collecting wristwatches and you already have a lot of Patek Philippe's because that's the other one that I think is just the wow at the same time, but you want something a little niche and you want something that I think has doubling and tripling potential, I would stick with any Jorn watch today because they're that scarce at 900 watches a year total. So this watch uh, comes complete with box and papers. Uh, it's available as well on our website if you want to see additional photos. And we are asking for the watch $39,750. So uh, a little bit about our pre-owned pieces in general. Uh, we generally do our best to try and price our pre-owned pieces to be the lowest 
within the lowest five to seven percent of the market. So if you search any of these watches online, what you'll quickly find is that you'll see other people posting the same watch for a lot more money. And one of the big reasons why we're so competitive is that we physically own the watch and have it at our location, whereas a lot of other people are just posting photographs of the watches and don't necessarily and, have And them. also, by us being an authorized dealer, it's sort of like, think about it. If you buy a watch from us with the warranty we give, most of them have brand new straps that we've put on. From, this is a brand new strap. From the brand. They've been polished and checked. And, at the, and the best part is, it's sort of like if you were going to buy Mercedes, you could buy it from a Mercedes dealer pre-owned, or you can buy it not from a Mercedes dealer. But considering we're an authorized dealer of 50 brands, buying from us is sort of like uh, uh, you, can trust, you, can, you, can, you can rest assured and have trust that you're buying a, a product that we stand behind. Yeah, because most of our, our, our watchmakers are authorized to service many brands, and we're an authorized parts account for most of these brands. And if there is an issue under warranty on any of these watches, uh, and we aren't able to service them ourselves, uh, you know, we are able to send it directly to the manufacturer. So I'm gonna move on to a new tray. We're gonna get some to more goodies. We bit. are gonna have to speed up a little bit. So let's see what we got here. Okay. Bring out a good tray. We're gonna bring out a good tray. So we've got here, let's bring out a good tray here. Okay. Oh wow, okay. Oh my. All righty, okay. Ooh. My caught. Is this a brass movement? That is a brass movement, okay, oh, Tim. Oh wow. Start you right off here with one of your favorites. We've got here a JLC Master Compressor Chrono. Yeah, great watch. I mean, first of all, big, bold, arguably JLC's response to the Audemars Piguet, Royal Oak Offshore, and the Hublot Big Bang. This was the JLC sports watch of the 2000s, made in many versions, none of which lived up to the sheer excellence of the first model. I mean, that's the one to own. It's a two-part case, partly titanium, partly steel. The idea is that you've separated the movement from the shock of anything from mountain biking to firearms marksmanship. It's a world-time chronograph with a manufacturer movement that you can wear while you're mountain biking. I can't think of anything better. Look, it's super cool. I mean, it's just, I don't know if, if Jaeger will ever make watches like this again. Probably not. Because, that was an error uh, that's passed. It was, yeah, it was just, you know, you know, it was just the type of watch that they made for the time. People, it was ahead of its time for what Jaeger was about. But it's just a classic watch if anybody wants to own uh, a little bit of Jaeger history. And what's so great about this watch, I mean, I feel like it was ahead of its time the same way that the Ambox was ahead of its time. Yeah. It was one of those technical marvels that... Uh, and it solved Technical a problem. Marvel. Exactly. Quick change strap. And this is not IWC Aquatimer. This is not Cartier Roadster. It'll take any strap of this width with a standard spring bar. So you can change the look of this watch. And I know because I own the Compressor Extreme World Alarm Tides of Time Limited Edition. Regular viewers of the show know it well. This is a watch that has so much content packed into its case that, to be perfectly honest, it gives you 90% of the content appeal of the Extreme Lab in a watch that costs maybe a fifth the price. And what's great about these two is right now, uh, you know, there's great value in the watches and what you can get them for. So this watch had a retail of $16,400 and on our website we are asking under $8,000 for the watch. So you can sort of see that this is one of those situations where um, you definitely are incentivized to buy it pre-owned. Okay, moving on here. Which one do you want to pick next? I would pick... Old classic Big Bang. So, so this... This is one that's near and dear to your heart, so yeah. I'll let you go for it. So this watch is the watch that Big Bang or Hublot launched. What year was it that they launched the Big, Big Bang? Big Bang came out in 2005, and that's the Plank owner. That's right. the father of them so all. So this here was the watch that brought Hublot back from the abyss. It was basically a dead brand, and John claude Beaver... Uh, and Ricardo Guadalupe uh, joined Hublot, and all of a sudden, this is a creation of John Claude Beaver at his best. And when this hit the newspapers, I'll never forget the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, you could not get this watch. And a great story about this is that um, John Claude Beaver made the, these watches, put them in the newspaper, 
And then they got so hot, he just told everybody that they were sold out. So everybody was begging, calling, and pleading to get it. And he also did it in rose gold with a ceramic bezel. But these two watches still made today are probably two of the best sellers. But if you want to see the, the watch that brought Hublot back, it's this one right here. In yeah, fact, so I own one of these. You do own one of these. So you received it from John Claude Beaver. himself. So 44 millimeter carbon fiber dial, ceramic bezel, uh, tire tread rubber strap. It's everything that you would want in a daily sports watch. Um, and uh, to this day, you know, as my dad said, it's probably Hublot's uh, number, one, num seller number seller. one selling piece, this version along with the rose gold version. How much is it? So on our website, we are asking uh, just under $9,000. we are asking $8,950 with a retail price of thirteen six. I'd also sell that. It's such a great watch. I would also highlight the fact that that watch, if you're the type to buy and sell watches a lot, if you like to trade out of your collection, that's the easiest Hublot to sell because it's like the Submariner of Hublot. It's their iconic watch. There's a permanent market with the ceramic bezel, the carbon dial, and the steel case. There is always someone looking for that watch. So again, if you're that guy with a lot of churn in your collection, there is not a better sports watch but it to also, have. This, this, it changed the game. This changed the game for Hublot. This one timepiece right here. And it's still, to this day, a classic. Mm. I love that watch. Okay, moving right along here. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this one because uh, Lang is a brand that I have very mixed feelings about. So right here we have the 41 millimeter Platinum Lang Datagraph Flyback Up Down. So I would say that this is probably uh, one of the more iconic pieces that really put Lang back on the map, and it is the most current version of the watch. So it's probably gonna be hard to see, but there's really a depth of movement there that's unrivaled anywhere else in the watch business. But one of the biggest problems that's been plaguing Lang, because you know they're well-respected for producing some of the watches on the planet, is the overall resale value of these watches. And you've got a lot of collectors that are hesitant to really dip their toe into the Lang market because they've seen what happens to the value of their watches once they leave the store. So what we found though is, is that there's a thriving secondary market for Lang watches because people love the design, they love the watches, they just can't get over that giant level of depreciation that happens once they take home the watch. So. Um, the Updown in particular ha has an extremely high retail of 90700 and it's a watch that we're offering on our website at 63.5. So, uh, you know, you can see the level of depreciation that the first owner took, but you can also see the value that's there um, I also for think, the second I owner. I also think that, that Long & Son has a leadership issue. I really do. I think if they had the right leadership at HQ, that the brand would be... Uh, doing much better. So if you look at Audemars Piquet's leadership or you look at some of the other brands' leadership, Patek Philippe's leadership for sure, uh, I think that uh, So while Tim is a talking a little bit more about the up-down, uh, it's time for another giveaway. So is, Sue, is this gonna be the app giveaway? No? Not yet. Not yet, okay. So moving on, Tim, what do we think? Patek I think, Thai? I think, I think since we just gushed over Hublot, we should probably give away the Hublot hat Patek okay. Thai next. Awesome. So we've got an awesome Hublot hat here, unworn. You can still see the carbon fiber, not carbon fiber, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so used to the cardboard in there so you know that this thing hasn't been worn. And uh, again, you know, hopefully everybody's emailed the, you know, the, the email address in the feed and we're going to find out who our next winner is. Right. So folks, I'll also talk a little bit more about the Dato because uh, personally it's a watch that means a great deal to me. And it should be mentioned that there are two different schools of thought with the Datagraph. There's the purist who likes the 1999 to 2011 model, and then there is the realist who likes the 2012 to present Dato up-down. Now the Dato up-down gives you the addition of a power reserve scale and a much longer power reserve. Okay, so the winner of the Hublot hat is Jason Horowitz. So Jason, somebody from uh, the Galgberg team is going to be uh, shooting you an email in order to get this bad boy sent out to you. 
Okay, would you put the back. other piece? Okay. Uh, I, would, I think uh, we can just settle that on the back shelves. Okay, so guys, basically, if you want the dado, but you want it to wear as opposed to collect, you want the 41 millimeter up-down. It has more stance, more presence. It's a little bit more contemporary on the wrist than the 39 millimeter original. And whereas the original had about a 36 hour power reserve, which is borderline unacceptable, this one has a nice long 60 plus hour reserve. And you get the power reserve scale, so you get more functionality, more watch for your money, more platinum for your money, and again, pre-owned, the absolute best way to buy that timepiece. And I think that, you know, you know, right before we move on to another watch, I think that it's a really a mystery to a lot of people why Langs lose so much value in the secondary market. And I think, I don't know if it's uh, an avail availability issue or just, uh, you know, just that collectors are a little bit skittish over the brand, but it's, you know, it's one of those watches that I think that if people are adding them to their co collection at the right value, that they can be great buys. I would say this, if people bought watches on merits, finish, quality, engineering, it's, that, as, fi it's that, as fine as any Yeah, watch. that would be priced toward the top of the pile. It wouldn't be seen as a bargain. That's one of the best you can buy at any price. So another watch that I think is uh, an amazing watch to purchase pre-owned, more so than new, not to say I wouldn't purchase a new one, but uh, is the IWC, here we go. We've got the IWC Portuguese Perpetual 44 millimeter watch. This one happens to be I in stainless one. steel, limited edition. I think this was a Cellini edition. Here, hold this for one second. Three, seven. I would buy that watch, you know. This is one out of 500. I'm not sure that this one's a Cellini, but it's definitely uh, an exclusive. I, that might have been originally an IWC boutique edition. So, and something that's special about these watches is you've got the indication right there at the bottom left of the dial where it shows you and displays the full year aperture, uh, you know, the current full year, which you don't really see on too many timepieces. So the only recommendation I can make on this watch is uh, don't go past because there's no way to go back. Yeah, you can't back up that perpetual calendar, but I will say guys, that is next it's to- so good. Next to UN system, that is the most user-friendly perpetual on the market. You adjust it like you adjust a Rolex date, just date, all the date, day, month, even the moon phase will adjust itself in sync. It's mechanically programmed. One crown, no case side pushers, clean. And a seven day power reserve. Yeah. Next, Brian, talk about this one. Okay, so this I watch right here. I we were selling that. Oh, so. Uh, this watch right here is FP Journe's uh, chronograph. Uh, it's presented here in rose gold with a, I guess, not quite rose dial, but, a, but a, a, a white tone dial. So a lot of these older brass movement Jorns, and this is, as you can see, is a brass movement Jorn, and by brass movement, the movement itself was done in brass, and this is prior to his all rose gold movements. So these were his original pieces, and this chronograph here is in 38 millimeters. And so, it's not made anymore, this chronograph. So this chronograph has been discontinued. It was discontinued years ago, and he actually, uh, I guess the, the chronograph that was made after this was what, the centograph? The centograph. But this, this model in particular with the brass movement was dead after 2004, as were all the brass movements with the exception of the 2015 limited series. So that's not just an example of a discontinued reference. It's an example of a rare version of and a this discontinued also, reference. This, again, I'll go out on a limb, and this will be a $100,000 timepiece in a number of years. No doubt in my mind, it's one of Jorn's original brass movement chronograph, discontinued. It's absolutely spectacular. And it's what, again, when he launched his brand, this is the look, and to this day, if you're across the room, what makes it so hot is that you know it's a Jorn. And again, there's a lot of watches out there that people know for a lot of show, but when you get Jorn, it's for people that actually know. And what's so special about That's these girls? That's pretty good. <laughs> perfect, like a pro nanny. Speaking, but, uh, but, speaking know, of Jorn. I'm my lessons up here now. <laughs> you want to keep the hit parade going. Speaking of Jorn, yeah. show us what came after. Show us what you're wearing on your wrist because we're getting oh, questions. I'm wearing an aluminum centigraph. It's, uh, it's an aluminum movement, one hundredth of a second chronograph. And again, what I love about this watch is you, I swim with it, play tennis with it, I play golf with it. And it's super light. So when you see a lot of athletes,
today that are wearing the watches when they're playing their actual sport. This is as light as any of them with, with yet an aluminum movement, an aluminum bracelet, and here's what's even crazier. It's the only watch that's ever been made, I think, Tim, with an aluminum movement. Is well, that correct? Uh, I, I believe, believe it or not, Hublot has done a little bit of work with aluminum movements too, but that's, that's certainly the only watch that's had the trifecta, the bracelet, the case, and the movement all in aluminum. And again, I'm, I'd say in the history of Jorn, when he was making this watch, he only made maybe a hundred of them total. And uh, I'm going to go on the record again. This will be a $100,000 watch in a few years. So... I guess uh, by watching me tonight, you'll all realize that I'm, I'm very pro Journe bullish when it comes to a niche brand. And what's so special about these watches uh, is, again, it was done truly from the point of view that, sorry, I'm probably not presenting them yeah. on, the, on the channel so well. Let's done from the point of view of, of him wanting to create something amazing and then being able to offer that to his customers. So uh, as he said, it was one, it was the first watch that was done in aluminum. It was eventually discontinued because it was so difficult for them to work with and that it was breaking all of the tools. So these are watches that I think over time, as the brand continues to develop and continues to, to gain uh, popularity amongst collectors, that the hunt for these older pieces will, will be going on more than ever and they just, they won't be available. So. Moving on to another piece, this is a watch that we've spoken about uh, before where we thought uh, yeah. you know, you're gonna see a resurgence of demand from are these uh, Ferrari Panerais. So, and this one happens to have a bright yellow dial and I brought it on the show because I thought that you would just absolutely love yeah. it. There were two different types of these. There was the Scuderia and there was the Gran Turismo and that one right there is the Scuderia. Scuderia was defined by the Ferrari racing shield, the yellow signatures. Gran Turismo was red signatures, more road oriented. Now this is the FER11. These are important because this is a unique Panerai case shape. It's not the Radimir, it's not the Luminor. With the exception of the rare Mare Nostrum series, this is the only time Panerai has had a separate case shape and it was exclusive to the Ferraris. These are rare watches, they're undervalued because because people unfortunately discounted the co-branding at the time. And if you've looked at what some of the best Gerard Perigo Ferraris have done and what the Hublot Ferraris have done, this is the outlier. And, and this, this is a market correction. Too, they they also happen. made, when they made these, they happened to not have sold. So what happened was uh, they liquidated this, these watches at the time because for some reason there was like uh, discussions within uh, Panerai that oh, you're selling out, you're going with, a, you know, with a, an endorsement of a car. So they sold these off and they made very, very few of them. So what's nice is now when you actually look at it, they're beautiful. I mean, they're, they're, they're rare, they're beautiful, and they're not that expensive. So again, so I'd, be, uh, is, I'd be a bull on that one too moving forward. So this you're getting a Panerai chronograph, uh, stainless steel case, rubber strap, complete with box and papers for under $5,500. So it's great. from a value perspective, I mean, you're paying for a stainless steel chrono similarly in price to the base it's, it's 000. Only, it's only going up again. Earlier. I'll put my name on the line. Two, three years from now, you'll see it'll be a nine, ten thousand dollars dollars watch. It, it's also, no doubt in my mind. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to make any predictions other than to say if you buy it, you'll love it. I'm the predictor. It's a watch that You're has... You're the expert. A, it's a watch He's that just sun. has a very We're a good cool... good team. <laughs> it, it's just completely unique. I would say for now, it's probably the Panerai for the guy who's not into Panerai. And in the long run, it's the Panerai for the guy who wish he could go back and get them when they were cheap. Exactly. Well, so, it's a winner. That's all I can tell you. I brought it okay. on the show because I knew you'd like it. I so, love it. Next. So next, we're gonna go. We're gonna go a little bit more niche. Uh, I brought along a pre-owned Resence that we have. Oh wow! So this is a Resence Type One. So uh, this is probably the Resence uh, that I would get if I was gonna treat myself to a Resence. Uh, as we've talked about on previous shows, Resence has an ingenious way of displaying the time using a liquid filled dial. So now this one, this is the type one, this is not liquid filled. This one is the Resonance Orbital Convex system though. It's the type, uh, 
three and five, I guess, that are yeah. liquid-filled. Those are, those are our liquid-filled. Now yeah, you can I don't see know too much about the way much. this dial and indeed the time-setting system works is it's a rock-solid ETA caliber underneath with the Resin's proprietary orbital convex system. It's like a planetary that tells time. And it's also a unique case of magnets being used inside a watch to link the base movement to the dial. All the setting and the winding is done with the case back. Completely unique, the company is headquartered in Antwerp, Belgium, Belgium, and they actually make their watches in Switzerland. So it's kind of the best of both. And this is a company that makes substantially less than 500 watches a year, and they're gonna keep it that way. One of the best of the independents. And what's so cool too is, you know, as an AD for the brand, we're really able to see what the, what the overall demand is for the pieces and just how many are coming into the States. So this is a watch where they've already said maybe 150 watches for the entire U.S. are coming in over the course of a year. So when we really do get them back and get them pre-owned, it's one of those watches that you really can't find them anywhere else. And this is a watch that has a retail price of just over 20000 at 20600 And on our website, we're asking just under 16000 at 15950 So these are watches that I think as far as independence go, um, you know, time will tell. But I think that that Resins is really going to be here for the long haul because they've you know they've come out with multiple editions, they've come out with multiple releases each year, and people still seem to to really like them. And when when we get them new or pre-owned, they sell fast. Like you never see Resins inventory sitting around. Exactly. People love them. And here's the other thing about them: they're friendly, unpretentious, and just plain fun. It's a watch to wear for yourself, not for the gawk factor. If you're a watch nerd like me, that's the one for you. Okay, let's move on to a, another tray. Let's, you, do you want to grab one? Why don't you grab that tray and put this one over there? Okay. Sue, so when, uh, when is our next giveaway? So four minutes until the next giveaway. So this is going to be an app giveaway, uh, which means that if you go on to the Gov Watches Watchbox app and you heart the article that is this live stream. We're gonna get notifications of who hearts it, and uh, you know, we're gonna be able to do the giveaway based on that. Also, I'm gonna throw out a comment from our live chat. Andrew Reddy, uh, giving a shout out to Robin from the Govberg sales team, saying, uh, she was great help with my last purchase. Robin, that one goes out to you. Hey, Brian, let me know. What are you wearing tonight? Because people are asking. So I am wearing a 5980-1A-001. This is the Nautilus chronograph with the blue dial. Um, and it is currently a discontinued piece that is making, uh, I think, a big comeback in the secondary market. It dipped for a while. You know, they were available uh, for, I would say, high 30s, low 40s for quite a while. And now you're starting to see a huge resurgence, you know, in the total... Nautilus line, and now I'm seeing them sell for, you know, upwards of 50, 55. Well, this, the steel 5980 has been very strong lately yeah. on the pre-owned market. Yeah. By the way, guys, that one's not for sale. This is not for sale, but what's interesting is, is, and a lot of people don't realize this, is a lot of people have been icing these watches out, but, and by that I mean putting diamonds all over the watches, and selling them for crazy numbers, and it's eating up the pre-owned supply of the watches, and it's making a lot harder to, to, to find them. So it's I mean, good for way, me, I guess. Dudes, if you're the guy responsible for diamond paving a steel 5980, I hope there's a circle of Dante's Inferno for you. So this... <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So this From is the actually <laughs> the only new watch that I brought on the show, and it's a watch after my own heart. We've talked about we've talked about Grand Seiko and Seiko a lot on the show, and this is the brand new Prospects Diver that just came out. So. Uh, the watch retails for $3,400. It's a re-edition of... Uh, 62MAS. Exactly. Uh, watch comes on a rubber strap, comes with a bracelet, and overall, it's just a fantastic piece. And what's amazing about this watch is this watch is pretty much sold out yeah. everywhere. So this is... Uh, we happen to have one left in stock. I snagged it, figured I'd bring it on the show. Uh, it's a watch that we've actually been seeing sell over list pre-owned. So they've been selling pre, you know, quote unquote pre-owned. Uh, we've been getting a lot of people trading them back into us because, you know, they're trying to make a market on them. But it's a watch that uh, has oh, actually no. been selling for about $500 to $700 above, uh, above list. And we're selling it, you know, just, you know, for the retail price of $3,400. And it is, in fact, a brand new watch. 
So if anybody is you know, interested in this piece, please contact Alan. Um, this one will probably be going extremely quick. I think it's important to note that if you guys love the Tudor Heritage Black Bay, you will adore this because this is as good as it gets in vintage tribute watches. It's a tribute to the old 62 MAS mid 60s Seiko diver. It is a Seiko watch at a Seiko price with a grand Seiko movement and a killer vintage it's look. Awesome. It's so this real. was this this one in particular was one that I really wanted to keep for myself. But and it's, all, and it's also amazing what Grand Seiko has achieved in the last what? Yeah, really, just five, the last five years. Five years. Less. It's like the watches. People think Seiko, and it's like, Seiko? Are you kidding me? Even people uh, within our company, when I'm sometimes at trade shows, people will say to me, uh, you guys carry Seiko or Grand Seiko? I'm like, yeah, people don't realize that Grand Seiko is... It's like the best kept secret of the watch industry It's the right best now. kept secret of the watch industry. It's rare. We do fabulous with it. Collectors know it. And again, it's a watch that, for those that know, they know, but it's not necessarily going to give you a lot Cutting of Cutting you off, we have another giveaway. Tim, okay. what do you think we should do this time? Okay, My now let's do a Patek tie. Okay, Patek tie. What year Timber. With Tim, so we, this is 2014. So we, here we have a Patek tie. So each year at Basel World, Patek Philippe gives out a tie to all of their retailers, and then during branded events, they give out ties from that, uh, that year. So over the years, uh, we've slowly built up a uh, Patek Philippe tie collection each year, just hoarding away some of these ties for ourselves. Uh, so this tie here, we've got a 2014, I guess, what color would you call it? You know nice too? I'd call that turquoise. It says, turquoise. It says on the inside too. It says 2014 Patek Philippe. 2014 Patek Philippe. So they sell for good money on eBay. By the way, these things oh. feel like butter in the hand. And yeah. our Washbox winner is Jeffrey Gladney. So Jeffrey Gladney, our team is going to be reaching out in order to get you this tie. Just watch out, guys. There's a magnet on the closure for that little watch case uh, for, for the tie. I know, irony. A magnetic closure on a Patek Philippe mechanical watch tie tribute box. Um, moving on. Uh, Another watch that I think has seen a lot of controversy over the last 12 months. And, you know, it's a watch that I think, um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of good qualities to it, though. So which is why I wanted to bring it out, which is the Piaget Polo S. So here we have the Piaget Polo S, automatic time only with a date. Uh, it's a watch that's been uh, likened to, I mean, the, I don't want to call the, the the ugly younger brother to the Nautilus. I would say it's the handsome big brother to the Aquanaut. The handsome big brother to the Aquanaut. So it's a watch that's taken the best elements of both. And personally, I thought when the watches first came out that they did, uh, you know, a great job. And, I, and you know, I, everybody ultimately needs to take it with a grain of salt because I think the first conclusion that everybody jumps to with these watches is, oh, they're copying this one, they're copying that one. And... In the end, at this point, everyone's copying everybody. Yeah, So nothing you know, sacred. Nothing sacred anymore. And one of the best parts about the watch is actually, you know, the price point that you can get. It's a, is it Geneva seal? No. It's not Geneva seal. No, no it's, not, it's not made in Geneva. So <laughs> it's, this is not a Geneva seal movement, guys, but it is an in-house caliber and a gorgeous watch. I mean, after all, this is what Ryan Reynolds wears and he's Deadpool, therefore automatically cool. But more on, more honestly, this is the kind of watch that's so underrated that I'd have to say it's almost undervalued. Well, this I'll is one to buy and love. I'll tell you what else happened with this watch. For years and years, people would say to Piaget, you gotta come out with a steel watch. And Piaget only would do gold or gold and diamonds. So what's actually really interesting with the timepiece is that it's the first time that Piaget finally said, okay, we'll make a steel watch. So, if you're thinking about it, this is the first steel watch, I believe, Tim, am I correct, that Piaget's actually come out with? They've had a couple of others. This is their most committed steel sports watch in a while, though. This is definitely the most earnest effort they've made towards a Nautilus-style, Aquanaut-style, overseas-style watch in a long time. And they've actually kept the, the market on these extremely tight. You know, they're not, they're not overshipping them. There's not that many Piaget dealers left here in the United States. So... Overall, you know, we've done very well with them. We've done great with this line, and the accessibility uh, has been, um, you know, more often than not, we don't have them in stock, and you know, we need to call and find out, you know, when we'd be receiving the next batch. 
So this is a watch that has a retail of just under 10,000, which at 93.50, which I think is, you know, very, you know, reasonable for what you're getting. And it's, we're asking just under 7,000 for the watch itself. I would say that's an absolutely <laughs> undervalued watch with a ton of character. And in the hand, you know eyes closed when you hold a well-made watch. You get that impression here. This is this is not Piaget doing Master of the Ultra Thin. This is Piaget doing a spectacular sports watch that watch nerds don't know about yet. Be the first on your block. So dimensions-wise, the watch is considered a 42 millimeter, but what would you say that it, we had a question from the chat. So it's considered 42, but how would you say that it actually measures? I'd say it actually, it wears smaller in terms of the eyes closed feel. It feels more compact. Eyes open, it looks like a 4344. I think the cushions, the slightly cushioned profile of the case gives it more wrist stance than the bare measurement. The bare measurement lies in my opinion. Okay. So moving on to the next piece, here we have a 39 millimeter Royal Oak Chrono in stainless steel with a silver dial. So uh, this is a watch that I'm a big fan of. I actually own the same exact watch with a navy blue dial. And it's a watch that Audemars Piquet discontinued in favor of the 41 millimeter Chronos that you now see to this day. Um, it's a watch that I think a lot of people, the moment that it was discontinued, sort of trying, started racing to get. Um, personally, I think it's a little bit better proportion and it fits my wrist a little bit better. Uh, Audemars Piquet it's watches- also, It's also in mint, mint condition. So, exactly. So this is a watch where, uh, similar to the Nautilus or any of other uh, Gentis pieces, if there's been any degradation to the case or any over polishing, it's really easy to tell. This one happens to have really sharp lines still um, and definitely was not over polished by any means. Um, yeah. By the way, this has been a rally in 39 millimeter off, uh, not offshores, Royal Oaks. This is the 20th anniversary of the very first Royal Oak chronograph from 97. And this reference was that first Royal Oak chrono. There's been a rally on the basis of people realizing that the 39s wear better. First of all, they were much bigger than 40 millimeters. Where's like a 41, yeah. 42? On the wrist, it's big because the integration of the bracelet and the lugs. So it looks big, it feels big. People are finding the 41s, frankly, are just a bit overwhelming, too close to the offshores. That and the anniversary has created a huge rally for these in the market as people realize how wearable and desirable they really are. Plus, first is a flag that flies forever. Most, greatest, complexity, all those absolutes get surpassed. First is one that can never be. And this is a watch that I would say over the last 36 months, you've seen a multi-thousand dollar increase in terms of resale value. Yeah, so it's a watch it that, uh, you know, I would say two to three years ago, you saw available in the 12.5 range, and it's slowly upticked since then, uh, to the point we're now asking uh, 16,950 for the watch uh, on our website. And I think that it's a watch that you're going to see continue to tick upwards because people are realizing that it's not so much just about whether it's an old version of the watch anymore, people now want the 39 instead of the 41 also, millimeter piece. I think piece. you have to give a tremendous amount of credit to Francois and uh, the Audemars team, because uh, a number of years ago, the brand was maybe floundering a little bit, but the guy, whatever he's done, whatever magic he's uh, sprinkled on it, the, uh, the brand is on fire. And, you know, I say that a lot of that credit goes towards their leadership. So here's to you, Francois. <laughs> okay, moving on to another piece. Uh, Tim, which one do you, th do you wanna highlight here? Well, how I'll about we choose. go big? Since we just went Royal Oak, let's go offshore. Okay, fine. Oh, so wow. so this is going to be the big daddy of them all. This is the Royal Oak Offshore uh, Montoya. So, okay. Remember Juan Pablo Montoya, the guy who set the fastest ever qualifying lap in F1 at Monza back when quality, you know, qualifying was qualifying. Do you remember that, guys? This was the first F1 commemorative mm -hmm. edition driver series Royal Oak I Offshore. It was designed in conjunction with Richard Mille, which is a partially owned subsidiary of AP. And that was the watch that broke through, brought motorsports into the world of the offshore. And to be honest, they got it right the first time. I don't think that was ever surpassed in design or style. And I would say like this is the offshore. This is What's the one this that really- made of? Titanium. This is titanium this with a carbon fiber bezel, car insert, carbon fiber insert on the side, carbon fiber inserts at the pushers. This was probably the, the, uh, 
the grandfather of that 44 millimeter case yeah, this that, uh, that you saw in the Schumacher as well as the current era uh, 44 millimeter offshores. Yeah, if, if, just if I could add, the square pusher style that came on board with the 2011 44s as a regular member of the catalog, in 2004, this was the first time you saw that profile. This watch broke so much ground on so many fronts, including the use of a display back on an offshore, something unheard of at the time. Plus, it's just sexy. It's got the oh dear, and that's how that's how tough it is. <laughs> so this is so wow. So this watch, uh, it has a sapphire crystal case back. Obviously, it comes complete with box and papers. This one actually was, uh, to my knowledge, never worn by the original owner. So it's uh, you know this is minus mint. him wearing it right now. How much is this? Some but, shop wear. Yes. <laughs> so it's actually in immaculate condition. It's never been refinished. Um, and for this watch, we are asking 37500 which I think in the long term, you will see this being one of the more collectible APs around. What did this retail for back when it was released? I have no idea. A lot less than that, I'm sure. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's a watch that's held its value well. The titanium was the only one to have from that series. They also made it in platinum. They also made it in gold. But if you want a motorsports-themed watch, it's you so want it with well. carbon and titanium. It's just well. They actually found that when he was wearing his watch, Juan Pablo was something ridiculous, like three thousandths of a second slower around Monaco. So they had him take his watch off for qualifying. That's the story I remember from that watch. Uh, next on the list, we have, so, watch after my own heart. I've worn the titanium version with a blue dial on the show before. We've got the Seamaster 300M right here, also commonly referred to as the James Bond watch. I would say that if you, you know, tell me if you disagree, Tim, that this is uh, Omega's, you know, stainless steel Samariner. This is their everyday tool watch, uh, ceramic insert. It's really the watch that they're catering to that for somebody to be able to wear a watch to dress it up, dress it down, and really just beat the heck out of it. It's a versatile watch. I'd say that it's probably more versatile than Omega's Cardinal watch, which is the Speedy Pro, but the Speedy Pro doesn't go swimming, this does. Exactly. So this is a watch that here. Do if you want to hold this up. This is a watch that uh, that retails for forty four hundred dollars, uh, and it's one of those watches where Tim had mentioned earlier in the show that a lot of people trade in and out of these pieces, and they you know from a value perspective tend to hold their value quite well over time, uh, given just the overall intrinsic value of what you're getting with you know with an Omega timepiece. Okay. What else do we have here? Let's move on to, do what, we'll talk about one more. So, um, Cartier Roadster, uh, Roadster Chrono here. This is a watch that we spoke about on, a lot of these watches, as you can see, are watches that I, you know, we've talked about on our shows before, uh, and really just because we like them. So, the Roadster Chrono is a watch that's been discontinued by Cartier over here, and it was one of the watches that we spoke about really wanting them to to bring back because it was a watch that did extraordinarily well here in the States, perhaps not as well everywhere else in the world. And uh, it's a watch that we really do fly through on the websites as we take them in. So I'm gonna have you talk a little bit more about the Roadster while I look up the details. Okay, yeah, the Roadster came out in 2002 and it was discontinued around 2011, 2012. The reason this watch is sexy is because they got it all right. This is what the Ballon Blue should have been. And the reason this watch didn't succeed, frankly, I don't understand. The, the integration of the bracelet, the crystal, the crown, the crown guard, the date magnifier, everything about this thing is sexy. The screws at the end of the case look like the French tail lights on a 50s hot rod. The dial of the watch looks like the speedo of an old sports car. And it's got a quick release strap system on the case back that so allows you to swap just like that. Really in and out, you, they have, uh, they, it, the watch used to come with a nylon strap and I think a brown croc strap as well. So super easy to use. Uh, and, you know, this watch can be purchased on our website for just under $6,000. And which it comes is, complete a, with the box and papers. Fanta it's a fantastic price when you think for $6,000 you get an automatic chrono. Do you know what these retail for? When they were new, they ran the gamut from about $8,000 to about thirty-five, but that would have been from a basic watch to a gold chronograph. This watch in particular, we still actually do get calls for. Just, you know, do you happen to have any in stock new and, or, you know, do they still make the watch? And it's, you know, it's an interesting conversation each time because the people are always like, well, why don't they make it? It's the only Cartier design. They actually should bring it back. Well, they should because people still want it. 
Yeah. I mean, hey. Well, it's also for a man. It's yeah. probably, if they brought it back, it would be the best-looking men's watch that Cartier would make. It, it's, so the only, yeah, it's the only Cartier that men go out of their way to look for, like pre-owned. Otherwise, it's just like, eh, it's going to be a Santos or nothing. It's, I mean, that's that's. They kind still of the make way the Roadster S, though, don't they? No, they don't make the Roadster at they all. They don't make the Roadster at all, no. even the S? I'm not sure if they make a ladies' model, but they definitely don't make a men's model. That's what? been dead for a few years. Uh, I'll also say this. The drive to Cartier is a nice piece. But this thing is going to come back someday as a Cartier revival. This is the watch they should have brought back, not the Pantera, this year. So let's talk about this watch because the Explorer II is a watch that has seen a lot of changes over the years. But let's talk a little bit about why we think the Explorer II is going to be one of those collectible watches in the future and why you can get them right now at a considerably good price point. Well, the good thing about the Explorer 2 is that you get all the functionality of a GMT Master 2, you know, provided you're, you're talking a post-dual-time mid-80s. The contemporary Explorer 2 gives you a complicated Rolex without the service costs of a Daytona or a Yacht Master 2 or a Sky Dweller. Plus, let's be honest with ourselves, chronographs look cool, but if you're going to have just one complication, it's going to be an alarm or a dual time, let's mm -hmm. face it. And I think that, you know, another thing that a lot of people look for too is price point. You know, there's not that many steel sports Samariners, I shouldn't even say Samariners, steel sports Rolexes that you can get now under $5,000. The other thing is, if you want all the capability of a GMT Master, but you want it at a lower price, you get the Explorer 2 with the same movement inside, the same capability, but a cleaner look. That dresses up better than GMT because it doesn't have the bulky rotating bezel. Exactly. And even now, like a you know, the new Air King 40 retails for $6,200. The new Explorer 39 retails for $6,550. So to be able to get a uh, you know, for Rolex, a complicated steel sports watch for under five thousand. This one we're asking forty nine fifty. Uh, is you know, it's. It, I, I mean, I'd call it's, it a bargain. It's another watch too. I think that over time you'll see. I think you'll see these go up a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars or two uh, over time. Or two over the next few years because it's just. Uh, it's a fantastic bargain that I don't. To this day, I don't even know why they bring what they bring so little. Meaning they should be at least a thousand or two more even as of now. And if you want a true white dial Rolex, that's one of your few options in steel. So it is time for another giveaway. Uh, How about a Breitling Bank? Tim, should we do a Breitling Bank? Yeah. Guys, Breitling you Bank. thought this was a book. You would be wrong. This is a very cool. So this is a Breitling Bank. So from outward appearance, it looks like you've got Breitling the book here. When in actuality, this is a we even have the fake pages. Drum roll. This is a Breitling Bank. So this is a secure lockbox. It comes with the key. Safe. Lockbox safe. Where um, is the key? It, the it key is inside. A, it, it, it's, it's a lockbox, guys. It's not a safe if you can carry it away. <laughs> okay, here we go. So it opens up, and this is just something cool that you can keep on your shelf if you want to, you know, have a little stash of anything in there. Now, now you know where to hide your Rolex. Exactly. So... Uh, Sue, who is our winner for this awesome Breitling? This thing is awesome. I know that. This is nice. That's been Breitling's best swag for I, like half a decade. It has. I, I the, can't even believe we still have a few these, of these. These in the pens. So who is our winner? We have Jared Feynman. So Jared Feynman, you are the winner of the Breitling book safe. And uh, our Godbrook team is going to be reaching out to you uh, to get this bad boy sent out. So I'm going to put this over here. Okay, let's do another tray. How about, uh, let's do this one right here. Hope I don't drop it. Okay. Yeah, we don't need any more of that. Tray, uh, we've got a couple other pieces here from different trays that we can start pulling from, so maybe we'll just, let me, yeah, we'll I move that out of the not, way. I think this is the last tray. Yeah. Okay. Boy, oh boy, we're making some headway here. We are. I'm having fun. You having fun? I'm having fun, Tim. Tim you having, having fun? fun? We could sell off Basel World <laughs> in two hours here. <laughs> okay. Everything at Basel World must go. So, this is the only Breguet that uh, that we brought for the show today. So, Breguet is a brand that I think uh, you know has been seeing a lot of trouble of late. Um, they've lost their direction a little bit, and um, but this watch in particular, the Breguet Marine in stainless steel. I think is a flagship piece of the brand. So you've got a guilloche center, which might be hard to see, so you've got a, a guilloche center there on the dial. You've got a black big date, which obviously matches the dial. 
a stainless steel case rubber strap. So this for, this for all intents and purposes is Breguet's 5167. This is Breguet's Aquanaut right here. So, but at a much, I would say a much better price point overall especially for the big date. Well, I'm gonna say you've got a lot you've got a lot going on here that you don't get in an Aquanaut. First things first, guys, this is a far more interesting movement than you get in an Aquanaut and a far more distinctive watch. Derivative of nothing, this is the style that Daniel Roth pioneered in the 80s when he was the head watchmaker and designer at Breguet. Take the look of a Breguet pocket watch and transpose it into a wristwatch format. What does that look like? You needed some real vision to be able to answer that question. The dial itself uses real rose lathe guilloche to create a look that's rich and textured and deep and charismatic. Top it all off with those gorgeous Breguet hands and a case that's cold rolled and then hand finished to create that coining on the flanks. Show, show them what that side of that case looks like. That's one of those Breguet signatures. And what's interesting too about this watch is it's considered a 39 millimeter watch, but because of the, the way that the lugs come off the case, it actually fits probably more like a 42. Yeah, it definitely wears larger, but it's also very clean. You can see how the ends of the strap conform to the case, so it's all of a piece. It doesn't look like an assembly of parts. Very integrated, very ambitious. I even say it's a bit Baroque. And the crazy thing too is, so this is a watch that, uh, that new retails for 15 dollars but pre-owned, uh, you can get it for under ten thousand, which, which I think, I mean, it, it's it's hard to, it's hard to argue with with this sort of value from one of the top tier brands in the world for under ten thousand. And I'm also going to say, guys, just remember, this has got a far, far more interesting case back than ninety percent of what's out there in the sports watch class. You want a watch that looks just as good on the back as the front, definitely Breguet. I want to say that's the fifty-eight seventeen reference. So we'll put that one down here. Let's do this one. Let's Which do one? this uh, along it. Okay. So this is a, another 39 millimeter AP Royal Oak. This one is the limited edition City of Sales. So we've got right here. Was the, th was the Royal Oak City of Sales the first variation of the watch? Yeah, I'll <laughs> tell you what, when this came out too, I think it was this one, these went so over retail. They were so hot that this was like one of the first times that they went with the... Um, the Alinghi or the, the, uh, the yeah. America's Cup brand? Yeah, with the America's Cup. And this watch, I remember when it came out, it was like you would beg them. They went over retail. It was a... Uh, it's still a classic, but it was just... Uh, it launched, again, Audemars launched a whole year of collectability with this watch when it came to the sailing in the uh, America's Cup. Also guys, I know we're getting a lot of questions for those of you joining us late about how to get the swag. Brian, how do you get the swag? So in order to get the swag, if you take a look at the live stream, just shoot an email over to watcheslive at govsbergwatches.com and we're gonna be you know, collecting names from there. And what we'll do is, uh, Sue over, you know, she's offset right now. She's going through, checking all the emails, and she's uh, selecting all the names. It's basically a raffle, and you enter by watches live at govbergwatches.com. Okay, so. Okay. It's also in the description field of the live stream. If you want to check it for reference, cut, copy, and paste into your browser or your email, you can fire that right off and you'll be entered. So the next watch here is a watch after my own heart. We've got the stainless steel, Rolex stainless steel Daytona with a white dial. So this watch has received a lot of attention of late ever, you know, it always receives attention, but ever since this watch re was released with the black ceramic bezel, uh, you know, things have been on fire. So the newest version of the watch is sold out in retailers nationwide. Uh, it's probably one of the most requested watches on the planet right now, and it's selling anywhere from I'd say four to seven thousand dollars over list in the secondary market. Uh, as a result of that, and as a result of all boats rising, the relative resale value of the more traditional Daytonas has started to rise as well. So this is a watch that I would say. You know, right before, so this one happens to not have box and papers, but you know, we did put a Rolex box with it. Uh, but this is a watch that before the Ceramic Daytona came out, I would say it was starting to pitter patter a little bit. It was probably starting to sell in the low to mid tens. It had been 15 years, so it was a veteran at that point. Boy, what a difference a year makes. Exactly. And it's a watch that is steadily ticked upwards to the point that. 
Without box and papers, it's now a wash that sells for around eleven and a half to twelve thousand. And with box and papers, we're seeing them start selling for about thirteen to thirteen five. So, uh, I believe that a lot of people are starting to embrace these and also these older style Daytonas. Uh, and that and there's also a tremendous um, uh, interest out of Asia now. So a lot of Chinese that are starting to buy pre-owned and a lot of the Japanese and a lot of uh, people in Hong Kong, they're finding that they want the Daytona and uh, the price is just ticking up. Again, if you need to own a watch and you want to be safe, you're not going to get rich on it. You're not going to lose on it. So if you laid out $12,000 and you bought a Daytona because you wanted just a great watch, you almost can enjoy wearing the watch for a number of years. With, with virtually very little downside. It's just, uh, it's just a classic that is uh, it's sort of like the Birkin bag of watches. And responding to a comment from Wolds11, um, uh, I would say that the 5711 blue dial is probably arm par, if not more scarce than the- Much more scarce. Much more scarce. So much more scarce than the stainless steel ceramic Daytona. Uh, it's a watch that most retailers are lucky to see even uh, one or two of a year. So, uh, and that watch itself, you know, you see selling in the secondary market now for upwards of in the high thirty thousand dollar range with a retail of twenty four five. So, uh, we actually have a Nautilus here. I brought one out. Will you grab me the? Okay. You don't really see them pre owned. So this is a watch that you don't really see pre owned that often. This is a fifty seven twelve rose. So it is the Nautilus power with Nautilus with power reserve, uh, moon and date. Uh, the R fifty seven twelve R refers to the fact that it's rose gold. It comes on a brown crocodile strap, and as I said, it's a watch that you don't typically see uh, pre on too often. Uh, with the anniversary of the Nautilus, all of the Nautilus watches in general have really exploded as far as desirability and demand goes and you've seen Paddock intentionally dry up the market. So they've intentionally stopped shipping uh, Nautiluses to many regions of the world in order to increase demand. Which they have, because right now Nautilus is, uh, is probably one of the hottest lines in the whole watch industry right now. And It's a brand in and of itself met, yeah, at this point. It's become, Nautilus has become a brand within a brand at Patek, and these watches now basically bring even pre-owned, they almost bring retail. So this is a uh, watch that times. retails for uh, a little bit over 40,000. I want to say it's around 43 and change. Uh, and it's a watch that we're, we have listed for just under 40,000. So we've, we've got the watch listed at 39,950. And the reason why you see uh, such little difference between the retail price and the pre-owned price is that just getting the watch uh, and finding one available is half the battle. And uh, this is one that's in immaculate condition. Uh, I don't believe it's ever been polished. It was probably only worn a handful of times. And it comes complete with the box and papers. And just to answer your question, Steve, that is right here. It's a gray-brown dial. Yeah, it's, a gr it's actually gray-black-brown. It, it, it's mostly it's a gray gradient. It's almost tinted brown by the fact that there are rose gold indices on it. I think that, that it a does call color. it, though, gray-brown on the website. It might be. Honestly, I'll tell you this, it's not a standard Nautilus. Consult the source, that's uh, less subjective. If Patek says gray-brown, then it's gray-brown. I'll tell you, in person, relative to the indices, it looks like a nice gradient gray metallic. So we've got another watch here. Uh, Breitling is a brand uh, that has come under new leadership, and I think that you're definitely gonna see a comeback. And you know, this watch in particular, the older 1461. So this was a, um, I don't even know how it was priced so aggressively, but it was a stainless steel perpetual calendar that Breitling did in their Montbriant series. So you can see here that this one has actually started to patina. Um, and it's a watch that you, for, to be able to get a perpetual calendar for under $5,000, I think is pretty crazy. So, um, so overall, it's in the Navitimer case, which is probably the best selling line that Breitling has to offer right now. We actually have a blue dial Arabic one on our website right now that I'm thinking of actually just taking for myself, which is the reason why I didn't bring that one on the show today, 
because if we actually do sell a watch on the show, I was nervous that it would be that one. So I brought the, the silver dial piece, which and, is actually just we, as nice. And we also have to give a call out to George Kearns, who was, uh, was left the job over at Richemont, but now he's the leader at Breitling. Uh, true, uh, true superstar within the industry. And uh, I think Breitling is going to get an awful lot of attention in the next few years in every single aspect. So I'm, uh, I'm very, very, very bullish on, uh, on the Breitling brand in every way. Because if they have George Kearns, Breitling's going to be going one direction, up. Uh, answering Mike K, uh, I do believe that you're going to see Breitling offering smaller watches. I think that you're going to see them going back into their heritage and bringing back watches uh, from their archives. Uh, and I definitely think that they're going to want to get these watches on more wrists and not just sort of be known as a brand that just makes oversized timepieces. So it looks like I am being signaled it is time for another giveaway. Tim Masso oh, wow. is gonna, ooh, wow, okay. So this you're going is, for broke right now. Yeah, well, so you know. So here we uh, have biggest, a, Our biggest brand, our biggest gift. Okay, so here we have a so far. Rolex, I guess you'd call it a carry bag or gym bag. Uh, nylon, so it's definitely for sport. I believe it's from their golf series of swag, so it's probably considered a golf bag. Inside, it comes with a, where's the, the, the pouch oh. that it was in? Did we take it out? Okay, so it comes with it. The, the bag itself folds up into a carry pouch right here, which, which can also be used to carry things like golf balls and other things like that, tees and whatnot. This is really nice. Yeah, it's really nice. I can't believe this. I think it's the only one we have. I think it is too. I'm, oh boy. So, In case you're wondering, it's green inside. It is green. Obviously. <laughs> so Tim is gonna hold this. We'll leave this right here for right now. And Sue is going to tell us who are. This is like a $200 bag, you know, Bri. Is it? It's yeah. got leather pull tabs for the for the so zippers. Our winner for the Rolex bag is Steve Place. Uh, I might be pronouncing that wrong, but I'm gonna, you know, pronounce it how it sounds. So Steve Place, you are the winner of the Rolex bag. Congratulations! This is an awesome one, uh, and our team will be reaching out to you uh, in order to arrange where these things are going to go. Okay. Moving right along. Oh my God, must be done. What do we have here? Okay. No, wait, you didn't talk about this one. Okay. So, and grab just one of the, you know, grab that, that tray down there too, because we have a no, couple on there. So, no, no, we, this watch right here is a somewhat new addition to the Rolex line. This is the Rolex Air King 40. Uh, this watch was released, was it, it was two years ago, correct? That was a 2016. 2016 release, so it was two years ago at Basel World. Uh, and it was the re-edition of the Air King. Um, so Rolex has slowly uh, put energy into these base model pieces, and this is the result. So you have here Arabic numbers going all the way around with your traditional three, six, and nine, similar to be found on the Explorer pieces and your more traditional Air King watches. You've got a completely brushed bracelet with high polished bezel, high polished sides, as well as brush edges on top. Uh, super popular again, too. Super popular. You don't really Can't see too many them. of them in stores. Uh, we actually had zero in stock at the moment, in stock new, so pre-owned is the only option for us uh, right now. And it's a watch that retails for 6,200 that we actually have listed pre-owned for on our website for just under six. So it com comes complete with box and papers, and as you can see, it's in immaculate condition. Uh, and you know we ship worldwide. I'll say this. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the watch? Yeah. To me, this watch was deliberately provocative when it came out. The look, the color, the numerals, the size. This is in a lot of ways today's version of the original Milgauss GV from 2007. It's big, it's postmodern. One might even say it's a little bit raffish. This is a Rolex for the guy who's maybe not a Rolex guy. It's not a big rotating bezel. It's not a big bulky sports watch. It's provocative but clean. You look at it from the side, it slides but right it's underneath still Rolex. the cup. Oh, it's a Rolex, and you can tell in the hand. That's a Rolex yeah, bracelet. It's a, it's, all a, solid. it's a it's a beautiful watch. To me, this is the one to buy. Again, if you're traditionally an Omega guy and you're thinking about Rolex, but you don't buy into the image of the Submariners, the hype of the Daytonas, this is the one to buy. This is the counterculture Rolex. Okay, so we've gotten some feedback that we want to talk more about some of these Jorns. So I've got right here a Jorn Octa Sport. So this is, or Octa S as it's shown on the dial. So the Octa Sport line is FP Jorn Sport line. 
Uh, you have the more traditional Okta case along with a tapered, you can see here how it tapers down. With a taper down to the rubber strap, you've got a magnetized, is it magnetized? No, so this is click deployment buckle all in titanium. What's so special about this watch, A, you have the, the luminescent hour indicator, uh, power reserve indicator here, luminescent hands, uh, but you also have a sapphire crystal case back here presenting the all titanium movement. Super light. And again, getting back to, to Jean, what what's the movement made of here, Tim? That right there, that's it's still aluminum. They never changed the so movement. It's aluminum. What happened was they made movement. the aluminum version the, the of aluminum. like the watch I'm wearing, and they also made, they then switched over to titanium with an aluminum movement. With an aluminum movement. But what's, again, super about these watches are, when you think about Jorn, and again, I, um, I can't say enough, is that maybe he makes 50 of these a year, 40. In fact, last year when we bought uh, a few of these, we were told that two would come into the United States. Some crazy low number. So again, as our show's gonna wrap up soon, um, Super bullish on Jorn. I believe every one of their watches will only go one direction up. Super bullish on Patek Philippe Nautilus and almost can't get hurt with Patek Philippe, but the Nautiluses and the Aquanauts right now, the sports line are on fire. The Daytonas, as my son talked about, are just classics and are just doing incredible. Audemars is just all the rage in the industry too with their Royal Oaks. And basically, uh, I'm bullish, on the wa I'm bullish on many, many watches. And the best part about our industry where it's changing the most right now is that pre-owned is absolutely exploding. People are buying, they're selling, they're trading watches like never before. It's become a hobby of guys, a passion for guys. And you can and, see here more than anything else. And it's become fun that you can... Watches are built to last forever. And, 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 and one other thing, I think that if you really like collecting watches, uh, two things. One, give us some feedback. This is my first show, so you know I get to be with him, so that makes it priceless, and with Tim, of course. And the other thing is um, give us some feedback on our app, because to me, it took us a long time to think about what a watch collector would like in between the news and the storage and to be able to buy and you know sell and see our inventory and to... Um, actually price watches to see what they are on the market because we are trying to be transparent to the collector and the consumer so that you know if you want to go in and you want to look at the uh, Daytona and you want to check it out and type it in you can immediately do that and uh, I really recommend we've had a few hundred thousand people or more download the um, app and uh, it's becoming an industry standard. So I highly, highly recommend downloading the app and putting your collection in because we're going to, um, we're going to be doing a lot more great things with it in the future. Okay. So I think we're going to do one more giveaway before we wrap up. Do we want to do, we want to do, do we want to do the book? No, no, no let's, let's, let's wait for that one. Yeah, let's do, let's do. Tim, what do you think? Rolex hat? I would say let's, let's give away a book. Let's okay, give away fine. a book. So we're going to give... No, let's give away... We talked about Jorn so much. So let's give away a Jorn book. This is his first 30 years. If you like or you even think that you want to collect Jorn, or I'm telling you, take my advice, no downside. The watches will pretty much all double in the coming years because you won't even be able to get one. That's how hot the brand's going to be. Uh, again, it's going to be hot because it's scarce. And more important... 800 watches, so it's just luxury. But the Jorn book, just so you see, it talks all about every one of their models. See, we showed you that one here tonight, and it tells you all about it. And this was the brass movement, like I talked about. It's a $200 book if you want to buy it, I believe. I believe they sell them for like $200. Yeah, $200 book. And it's going to go to our friend Tim Hawkins, and I hope, Tim, I hope that you like FP Jorn, because I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going out with a bang, guys. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Remember, yeah. you could still enter the raffle for the next show by emailing us at watcheslive at goffbergwatches.com. Again, get ahead of the curve. We're going to be doing this again, but we're never going to be giving away the same stuff. Danny, Brian, if, uh, what do we have to look forward to? If you guys think, if, if you have any comments, because I do believe in the future that we should be able to talk about watches and sell watches and 
you know, trade watches. And if you like that, this format, then we can uh, just send us your comments because it's the first time we ever did it. And, and if there's watches in particular that you want to see, or if there's watches on our website, uh, that you can go to that if you you know that if you want to take a look at you know or brands or anything like that Maybe yeah. we'll even bring FP Jorn or Thierry Stern on the show one day and uh, they, sell some watches yeah, He can sell some watches. <laughs> Sky's the limit. Uh, but thank you guys for logging on. This is Watches Live. This is Danny. This is Tim and hope to see you guys soon.